may be all right. So this is problems? Right. With those, we should also be able to use everything we've learned since organic one if we had to synthesize using past methods. Uh, the good news is, yes, you can. Uh, if you can make a compound using any chemistry, uh, then any chemistry should be fine. So we should think beyond just test three chemistry is what I'm saying. We should. Yeah, you can do that. I don't know that it will be necessary, but yes, um, you can use any chemistry you'd like. Any other questions? Uh, what about the material? Uh, did we finish up everything? Can we go over all of the homework problems we haven't gone over? Like the blue sheet that we just finished up, there were some homework problems. Predict the product. OK, uh, on the uh, warm-up page, we get this here. Yeah, you said there's a grain yard. Uh-huh. We need to make this bond here. Nucleophile and here. You remember when we did epoxides and we got nucleophile, carbon, carbon, OH? Adding a nucleophile to carbonyl like this is going to be nucleophile carbon OH. Nucleophile carbon OH. Just one carbon. Nucleophile coming in here, electrons up. Make anion, and the oxygen can be just protonated by workup, nucleophile OH. Well, the nucleophile needs to be. Basically, this anion here, how can we get that anion in the form of what? Most common for carbon anions like this would be the Grignard reagent. If you consider this all ionic, that carbon is an anion, minus Br minus Mg2 plus. And so this ketone would react with the Grignard to give this after appropriate workup, that workup would put the proton on the oxygen. Then we would have nucleophile carbon OH. Uh, show four different products that can be obtained. Uh, anybody have uh, by reaction with what? HBr? Anybody have some? What's the product that you could get? Reaction this with HBr. Reaction of tramadol with HBr? Yeah. I can't guess. Yes. Is it that you can permit the alcohol and then have that deleting group and then it be a S in one reaction then? You have a product? Uh, when you just replace the alcohol with the Br? Substitution reaction of the alcohol to uh, have a, a bromine? Yes, sir. By what mechanism? S and 1. Okay. Yeah? Seems reasonable. Uh, 
Uh -huh. um, for this specific question, should we just go ahead and always assume that there's going to be an AKS for the This year? Yes, sir. Uh huh. It didn't, I have all of mine in anion form because it didn't say aqueous workup. And so I just assumed. Uh, either way, it's okay. I mean, very often it, it's going to say assume appropriate workup. Um, or if it's a multiple choice or something, it's going to show the product in the neutral form. Let's draw structure and see. First one here, what are we going to get? This alcohol. Yeah. Where did the proton come from? Work up. Work up. Which bond did we make? No. Up there. The benzene ring anion added to carbonyl electrons up. O minus. Um, here's the same thing. What is up here? Uh, before we work it up, six three, electrons. Three uh, pairs of charge. Three we work it up with H plus workup. But what is this here? After the Grignard adds to carbonyl. The carboxyl It's an anion. It's an anion. Uh, is it okay to show it maybe like this? Yes. Because if, that, if, if the oxygen is a minus, what's the plus that would be with it? Every minus has a plus. We've also got magnesium 2 plus. And we've also got B or minus. That's what else would be here. I've seen things shown like this, and it gives students problems sometimes. Like, what is that? Well, it's O minus, and it's MG2 plus, and it's B or minus. Uh, and when you work this up, you're going to make, you're going to pregnate this. Magnesium two plus. That, that's it. That's the, that's the, that's how it's going to exist for the rest of its life. Uh, and then Br minus. The Br minus. Um, okay. In any event, just because we may only show it like that, don't forget about the cations. Okay. Every anion's got a cation, and it could just be shown there. Just like if Cl Cl minus. Instead of showing it Cl minus, could I show it Cl Na? Well, that's just this backwards, right? Isn't that Cl minus? Yes. Yes. Sometimes you can just show it sitting with the plus, and you don't need to show charges. We we show sodium chloride like that all the time, but we know it's charged. Okay. Uh, next one. It basically, what's the nuclear file here? Is the starting material the same in all of them? Yeah. Just the first two? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to get OH, methyl, and methyl. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I mean, that's a methyl there too, if you want to draw that in. Mm -hmm. It's the same as above, except here, what was the nucleophile? Uh, just not hydrogen. H, see the new H there? Got a new H, right? Okay. So it's the same thing. Yes, appropriate workup is needed. How we do on these? Ah, down here we have uh, acid chloride. What type of product are we going to get here? Um, OH with two The first one there. will go all the way to an alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first one is going to add twice. Ethyl. Added, displaced chlorine. Because here when the ethyl anion adds, since we ethyl anion electrons in up, it's not just going to sit there. 
So the anion will come back down, kick off the chlorine. This is quick hand, gives ketones. The ketone is going to then react again, right? Right. And with workup, We now have two ethyls on the carbon. Electrons up, this is minus, but with appropriate workup, the second step here, we can get the H. It's going to require appropriate workup. Because if I go back to the anion, at this point, there's no leaving group on the carbon. This is not going to come back down and kick off an alkyl or a or benzene ring. Not in this club. So this is game over. All, all you can do here is just throw in some acid or sometimes just water and put the proton on and get a neutral product and you got an alcohol. What if we do this with the ethyl cuprate? Isolate the ketone. And if you do it with the ethyl cuprate, you will get the ketone. It stops at the ketone. It only adds once. Reaction of cuprates with acid chlorides is a great way to make ketones. Grignards will react twice. stereochemistry for those products, the first three should have been racemic, correct? And the uh, last one is not chiral. Stereochemistry, what do we have here? We ended up with a chiral carbon with the alcohol. Right. Yeah, it's got to be racemic. So the only one would be the last one because it wasn't chiral, because we ended up with the carbonyl. Uh, OH, that's racemic. Uh, this was not this was not chiral though, it had two ethyls. Oh, okay. Two ethyls, not chiral. So racemic would not be the answer. Okay. And and that's not chiral either. But that one wasn't. Yeah, the first two would be racemic. Did we go over the organophosphorus nerve gas serin? What products it would form? Uh, this is going back as a nuclear file. Uh, electrons up to make anion, oxygen anion, but then that can come back down. Again, shorthand here. Anion comes back down, we're going to kick off the fluorine. This is carbonyl chemistry with the phosphorus. Reform carbonyl. Now, this is Nitrogen would have to lose an H to go neutral. Now I'm doing this like carbonyl chemistry. You could get an argument that it's it's a little bit differently different. Now because of the structure over here, it could be a little bit different mechanism, but we don't need to worry about that. You can do it analogous to carbonyl chemistry. And since phosphorus makes see phosphorus is like nitrogen, it can either have three bonds in a lone pair. 
Or you can have a five bonded phosphorus. This is where the lone pair has been oxidized. The phosphorus is neutral here. It has an expanded octet. So phosphorus is able to do this where nitrogen, you would never have such a structure. It's using its d orbitals. Um, but analogous to carbonyl chemistry, it's just an acyl substitution. Oh, this is not an acyl group. It's an addition elimination to give an overall substitution. Uh, very reactive, it's going to destroy your enzyme. Because your enzyme is going to react here. Your enzyme is meant to react with acetyl-CoA to cleave the acetyl group off of acetyl-CoA, the acetyl group. Instead, the enzyme reacts here, electrons up, back down, kick off this oxygen, and you remove the acetyl group from the oxygen and turn that back into the alcohol, which is just called choline. That's choline. But that destroys acetylcholine, and so it removes the neurotransmitter, and that's how it's an important process in the body. If you don't remove the neurotransmitter, you're going to have a problem. Because acetylcholine is good, but too much is bad. Question? Um, probably that's why yeah, I recognize the argument. F is uh, um, I think it, I think it should be the leading group. Um, it is. You you say it in there that it is the leading group, but it's a good question as to why it is as opposed to the other way. Uh huh. Well, it's uh, F minus is more stable than O minus. So uh, it seems reasonable for it to be. And we're forming HF as well? Uh, theoretically, HF would have to be formed. F takes the H. In the body, there, there's other things that can take the H. Uh, or even just water. Because it says show the two products that are formed. So we would be showing HF. Okay, yeah, I think the nature could be the other product. Okay. Yeah. have a new handout for the test four material. Are there any other uh, yes, in things the, we did not answer? In the green packet, the polymerization, can we go over that? Kevlar, what you get for Kevlar? How would you make Kevlar by condensation, polymerization? We didn't talk about this? So I asked about it and you said, um, I thought it was called paraphthalic acid. You said it was terephthalic acid, but we didn't actually go over the sheet. We never got to it last lecture. Uh -huh. So I, I think it's going to be the terephthalic acid with 
one for diaminobenzene. Uh-huh. Yeah, it'd be uh the diacid and the diamine. These two would be the, the two different monomers that would react. The amine here basically displaces the OH, loss of water. Problem is it has to be activated, but if it is activated, we can get that there. That's just where each reacts. <coughs> But then this can react with another of the molecules of the acid. This becomes bonded to the carbonyl with loss of water, condensation. And this is then just here. But this can react with the amine of one of the diamines, and then you would have amide here with loss of water, condensation. And this is uh, quick here, yeah, and this would be this. And then this could react with an acid to give an amide here with loss of water, condensation. And this is the acid. And this could react with the amine here of the diamine to give amide with loss of water, condensation. And that would give that. And somebody stop me. It's, you can stop. Okay. So for Dacron then, would it be the terephthalic acid with propanol for the next one? If I understand that, the amine reacting with, with the acid with loss of water, again, there has to be some type of activation as described on the first page. Very often, this, it would be better if the acid was the acid chloride, but that's activated. You can also do it with the acid, but you've got to be careful about understanding how you can do that. If it was the amine reacting with the acid chloride, you wouldn't lose water. What would you lose? HCl. HCl. Well, then you would need a base because the HCl would destroy your amine, would react with your amine. Okay? But if this is OH, you would lose H. HO, H2O, can be done, but not in this class, except for here. All right? Understand that this requires some type of activation. Uh, so that's a polyamic, but it's, it's a copolymer because it has two different uh, monomers where the... Uh, a, um, We use this one type of monomer, like uh, before, uh, homopolymer. Uh, that's a copolymer. The, the esters down here, these are polyesters. So they all the ester groups. You would need to, this would come from this alcohol here, <coughs> OH. This is the same thing up here, right? Um, That's an ugly ring. That's an ugly draw ring. Right? O R. Uh, we need. It's this here, right? These react to lose water. We're going to make ester. This reacts with another one to lose water. We're going to make ester. But this has yeah. And then you keep going. This reacts with alcohol to get this. And this reacts with the carbonyl. Okay, somebody stop me. 
what do we have here? We have a repeating unit. Oh, carbonyl ring, oh, carbon carbon. So the repeating unit is there, which I showed as the repeating unit. You'd have to keep going, but if you keep going, you're going to get or just a repeating of O carbonyl ring. We didn't do it long enough, but that would be just a repeating unit. Um, How do you know where to start the repeating unit? Is it where the reaction site is, like where something has been cleaved or removed? You, you could start it anywhere. Oh. Okay. You just have to, have to identify the repeating unit. I think, yeah, I think that, that can be showed variable. I could have two carbons over here. If I had two carbons over here, I would have ended it here. Basically, since it's a copolymer, it needs to get pretty long before you start having repeating units coming. I mean, as much as we did, I only had it one repeating unit up there. Uh, down below, it's the same uh, terephthalic acid. The alcohol is just this here. Cyclohexane with CH2OH, CH2OH. Uh, those can take a little... Uh, looking at. Um, a class on just polymers would be a uh, would be nice. There's just not enough time to uh, Talk about stuff in sufficient detail. Um, kind of consider this sort of a uh, miscellaneous topic. It's important enough to show you, but just not part of the course enough to uh, go into the full details. So I kind of expect you to uh, do some on your own. And uh, ultimately, if you want to learn about polymers, homopolymers, copolymers, et cetera, here's, here's sort of the chance in the uh, some examples to dive into and the relevant applications. Anything else for the material? Test three material? Carbonyl compounds, condensation polymers are a very common type. Um, we'll see other types uh, during test four. Okay, test four chemistry. Aldehydes, ketones. Uh, this is a uh, well-crafted overview here. Uh, I'm Model compound is a ketone. This could also be an aldehyde. So what type of reactions can we do with aldehydes and ketones? Here we go. This is an overview of what we'll be looking at. I believe we'll start with hydrate and we'll move around this way. Uh, the Wittig reaction we'll be doing after the eight-week lab. Okay. Uh, we have two more weeks of the eight-week lab. This week is sort of your last sort of working main day. Next week will be your last day and you'll turn in your compounds next week. Okay? Um, now nomenclature of aldehydes ketones will be by video and that will be in the next handout. Um, 
I'll give you that handout on Friday. Okay, reactions of aldehydes, ketones. Roman numeral one I call non-reversible reactions. Uh, this is when the nucleophile uh, cannot act as leaving group. Now we've already been doing these. The warm-up question that had tramadol, and it, the answer was a Grignard. It was a non-reversible reaction. All right. Here the nucleophile adds to carbonyl, electrons up, and again the transition between test three and test four is sort of not clear. We're just kind of moving, continuing ahead, focusing more now on aldehydes, ketones. Right? Wouldn't that give this? Yeah, nucleophilic addition to carbonyl. But that's not reversible. Non-reversible. You're not going to come back down and kick that nucleophile back off. When is that the case? Whenever the nucleophile is a hydride, or an alkyl, or an aryl, or alkynyl. Okay? Grignards, hydride reagents like LAH. That's an example of a non-reversible reaction. The only thing you can do is just add in some type of a proton source, or H+, plus, and just protonate the oxygen, and you end up with alcohol here. I make a note, nucleophile typically does not have a lone pair in there, like an H or just a plain carbon. Uh, so here's a precise example, right? Look pretty straightforward. Methyl magnesium iodide, electrons up, proton. Where's this H? It's still there, it's just not drawn in now, right? So I consider those non reversible reactions. Nucleophilic addition of carbonyl, non reversible. And we've been doing some of those. All right? Not a lot new there other than just sort of calling it non-reversible. The remainder of this handout is reversible reaction. All right? Now, the textbook is probably not going to present this in this way. This is more of me, how I think it's sort of a broad way to introduce this chemistry. Aldehyde or ketone. Okay? Aldehyde or ketone. So an aldehyde here. Nucleophile can add, electrons up. We would get this right. Reversible means that this could come back down and kick the nucleophile back off. Will be reversible. This is when nucleophile can act as a leaving group. When is this the case? Any atom that is more electronegative than carbon, even carbon can leave when it's very stabilized, such as Cn or CX3 anions. In some, in some cases, this could be reversible. Yeah, can this continue on in any way? It is possible. You could also do the same as above and protonate and get to this. But at this point, because the nucleophile can be a leaving group, that's why this is reversible, it could also leave at this point. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. Forget that. Leaving is going this way. An alternative is for the nucleophile it has a long pair, okay? It has a long pair for it to turn around and kick off the oxygen. This is another possible pathway. 
and you're going to end up with double bond between nucleophile and carbon, and you lost the oxygen. Either it has hydroxide, or for under acidic conditions, maybe it's water. Maybe we protate this oxygen first. Okay? So some general ideas there. A, this apparently falls under two. So this is apparently reversible. Let's look at this. Simple additions I'm calling this. That'll make more sense when we start doing something that's not so simple. And the simple, not so simple is really doesn't mean it's more difficult. It just means it's just something else is going on. Reaction with water. Reaction with aldehydes or ketones with water to form hydrates. Because we're reacting with water. Outer active ketones can react with water. Electrons add, electrons up. Let's do this though with a catalyst because while this is possible, this can be catalyzed by acid or base. Uh, let's do acid, yeah? If it's catalyzed by acid, we're adding it to a protonated carbonyl. I assume you can protonate a carbonyl, and I can skip that mechanistic step. Then water adds to carbonyl, electrons up. Give that right. And what do we need to do to get to our hydrate? Proton transfer. You want? Proton transfer. Proton transfer to what? You need to reform the acid. The acid catalog. Well, that is a proton transfer. Typically, I would only say proton transfer if it fits within the molecule. Oh, okay. Uh, if, if, we're, if we're some type of acid. Uh, maybe we used HCl as the acid catalyst, then Cl minus. Take the H and leave that behind, and we get that, and we reformed our acid catalyst. with no catalyst. If you just add water, we got this, but that would have been O minus. Then we could have done proton transfer. O minus takes the H, makes that neutral, this becomes neutral, we can get that as well. Okay? Um, where'd this H come from? I think that's supposed to be the methyl. Yeah, that's the methyl. I had an aldehyde there, but now I got a ketone, so I have to keep that straight. Aldehydes or ketones? If I do it with an aldehyde, you can do the same thing with a ketone. If I do it with a ketone, you can do the same thing with aldehyde. It's called a hydrate. Because we've added water to the carbonyl, right? Also called a gem diol. Geminal diol. It's a diol, but they're both on the same carbon. They're like twins, Gemini. If they were next door, it would be called a vicinal diol. Okay? Is this reaction reversible? Can a, can a diol be converted to a carbonyl? Yes. Yes, everything is reversible under two. Um, 
How would you reverse this? If we had acid, could you prognate one of these? Yes. If you prognated one of these, could the other oxygen then serve as a nucleophile and, or move this in and kick off the water? Mm -hmm. And that would give that back, right? And if this is here, the Cl minus could take the H and you could go neutral. Okay? Completely reversible. Um, now, hydrates are not stable. Most are not stable. And the equilibrium here favors carbonyl. Uh, some hydrates, though, are stable. This is a stable hydrate. First off, you need to recognize that this is a hydrate, it's a gem diol, a carbonyl hydrate. Uh, hydrates can lose water. If this lost water, what would it form? Can you show that product? I'll let you do that on your own. This is called chloral hydrate. Uh, it used to be used as a, a sedative a long time ago, like 50, 70 years ago, back in the 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, it's actually stable. We'll talk about that. Think about why it may be stable where if this was just CH3, it would not be. What about the chlorine to make that stable? Question. In organic one, didn't we form hydrates from alkene? Right? You hydrate an alkene. And we That's going to give it just as equal to an alcohol. Okay. So the product is not called a hydrate. The reaction is called a hydration. The product is called an alcohol. Okay. Hydrate may be, me, need to be clarified. We're making hydrates of carbonyls. Very often, though, if you say hydrate, the first thing people will think about, chemists will think about hydrates of carbonyls. Okay. Um, hydrate of a carbonyl. <coughs> Where have we seen hydrates before? <coughs> Oxidation of aldehydes. During test one, this course, I showed you this. The aldehyde has to be converted to the hydrate first. Then when you re remove two H's, and that becomes double bond. Double bond OOH, double bond OOH. It's actually the hydrate that you're oxidizing. Okay? And that's the hydrate of the carbonyl. Now, this equilibrium favors which? It highly favors this. This arrow is actually about this big. Okay? Very little favor in equilibrium. But guess what? This gets oxidized. And so what happens to this equilibrium when that gets oxidized? More of this forms. At any one time, there's very little bit of this. But as it gets consumed by oxidation, this keeps adjusting. And, and before you know it, all this is gone. But it just keeps adjusting. Right? See, that's the, that's the gem diol, the hydrate of this. Water can add to it. Another simple addition is reaction with HCN. Now HCN is actually a weak acid and we can um, show it prognated. Um, Show it prognated here. 
All right, it depends on how strong of an acid this is. I'll go ahead and show it protonated. And then the cyanide, can just add electrons up, and what does that do? Here's this product here, okay? Now hopefully you're not confused, but I drew the cyanide above the methyl, where here it looks like it's below the methyl. It's, just, it's the same thing. Um, this is called a cyanohydrin. You may remember from Organic 1, we made halohydrins. <coughs> uh, but the halohydrins we made in Organic 1 were we're actually not like this. Uh, this would be a geminal halohydrin. In, in organic one, we made vicinal halohydrin. Yeah. So would that be receiving? Uh, here? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it would be receiving. Has to be. It is chiral. Okay. Uh, that's not the type we made there. But you remember the term halohydrin from organic one? It's a halogen and it's the, also the OH for like hydro. Okay. This is a cyano kind of hydro or OH. Uh, these are possible. Now cyano, cyanohydrins are stable. These can actually be formed and isolated. For hydrates, you, you cannot isolate them except for a few rare cases. Uh, you can't isolate a cyanohydrin. Cyanohydrins, though, can be toxic because can this reaction reverse? Yes. Yes, everything we're doing is reversible. And with some little bit of heat or time or maybe a biological enzyme, it can reverse. What's it going to produce? This plus what? HCN, and HCN is a deadly gas. How can it reverse if we just show a mechanism? Well, anytime you can make a pi bond and you kick off a leaving group, that's easy to do. What does that electron movement give? Uh, gives this with an H here, yeah. By agree, we just kicked off the leaving group. And then the cyanide can take the, take the H, and there you go. There's your mechanism for the decomposition of your cyanohydrin to reform the carbonyl compound and to generate HCN. Uh, you don't want to ingest cyanohydrins. You're going you're gonna to have HCN in your body. Uh, the pit of a peach actually contains a cyanohydrin. Anybody ever heard of that? Yeah? Okay. Uh, was there a question? I was going to ask if this happens in your body, what's going to happen to you if you have HCN in your body? Well, uh, it, can, it can hurt you bad. Over in uh, Africa 10, 20 years ago, some of the cattle, cows were dropping dead. It took a long time to figure out what was happening. It turns out that the hay they were eating, some microorganism was growing, and the microorganism was producing a cyanohydrin. And then when the cows ate the hay, the cyanohydrin that was in the hay was decomposing and releasing ACN, and the cows were dropping dead. They finally figured out what was going on. So, uh, an alternative to using ACN. We're not going to do this in lab because this is a toxic gas, and some of you guys have trouble putting lids back on containers after using them. And we can't have that with toxic gas. We really can't have that with anything. But I'm not going to be in a lab with a lid left, left off of uh, toxic ACN. Uh, how can we do this a little bit safer than using ACN? KCN. We can use KCN. What do we need to do this? We need a proton source and we need cyanide. That doesn't have to come from ACN. This supplies the cyanide and an acid can supply the proton source. What acid? Well, this is actually a solid acid. H2SO4 is a liquid, 
the monohydrogen sulfate or sodium bisulfate, that last H is still acidic enough to act as an acid catalyst. So here's your H plus source where you can protonate the carbonyl. And then here's your cyanide source. And so you can do your mechanism, and you don't have to use HCN. Would you rather use a deadly gas or two solids? If you spill these solids, you can sweep them up. If you rupture your gas tank, you ain't sweeping up HCN. It's going to be all over the place, and you're going to have to evacuate the building. I'd rather use two solids. Now, that doesn't mean you, you, you can ingest KCN. If you start eating it, you're going to be in big trouble. But at least it's not going to chase you around the room like a gas would. Okay? Two solids. Understand chemistry here. The proton source can be something other than ACN. The cyanide source can be something other than ACN. Have a good day, guys.